Hey, welcome to this video for my three finger banjo arrangement of I Wash My Hands in Muddy Water. Okay, so I will play through it and then I'll talk about it and go through it line by line. Okay, here's what it sounds like. One, two, a one, two. form of this tune and then we'll talk about the challenges of, of arranging and all that sort of stuff. So uh, the chords are relatively simple. We have uh, the verses in the chorus are the same melody. I sang through both of them just so we could, I don't know really why, I think this is what I did. <laughs> okay, but uh, let's go through <clears throat> through just the chords. So uh, I'll sing the chorus here so you hear it. So it's, I wash my hands, G chord, in muddy water, D or D7. I wash my hands on that D7, but they didn't come clean. Tried to do what daddy, here's the C chord, told me. But I must have washed my G, D7 in a muddy stream. All right. So make sure you kind of get that a little bit in your head, get it in your fingers, know where those chords happen. That makes it a lot easier. Now, that said, when I was doing the arrangement of this, because this is one of those tunes where uh, the song is in G major, but most of these melody notes are sounding quite minor. And I think I'm actually singing it probably more minor than a lot of versions. Uh, that's just kind of how I'm hearing it when I did this arrangement. But there is a lot of minor sounds. You get these, these Fs and B flats. So in the arrangement, I basically kind of chose not to play the chords at all. I'm pretty much only playing the melody. And that's why I decided to do this up the neck version because there's no difference. It's the same arrangement. I'm just literally like hitting the same notes up a, an octave. And I'll talk quickly about that at the end. But uh, there is a couple complications here. So first off, again, I'm not really playing the chords. So I'm not holding any chords down the whole time that I'm playing. But uh, there's a couple complicated things. One is a lot of times I'm carrying over a forward roll over the bar line. So instead of having this sort of a sound. Right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I kind of keep that thumb index middle going. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Right? So it's kind of doing the same thing over. And if you haven't done that before, this can be a little bit tricky. There's also a lot of... Um, anticipations happening right at this beginning right so that melody note if you see it i'll put up the the, the first line here um that first melody note that note comes in before beat one one two three and then you have this one right there so that happens a bunch of times in the in the arrangement um and it's just kind of, uh, we often refer to those as pushes or anticipations. So we're playing this note before the melody, 
or before beat one and it's tied over. So if that's tricky, this will be a little hard. One thing you can practice is you can just try practicing that first two bars. That'll help you through a lot of the song. Then repeat it. Because that comes up again. And I'm just doing that all the time. Okay, and then the other thing that I'm doing, which I just did, is I'm doing a lot of double stops. Um, so double stops are just when you're hitting more than one note at a time. On the banjo, the most common one is just to do uh, the open D string with your middle finger. Um, so I use that a lot, and sometimes that can throw things off, because when you do the double stop, you have to um, be prepared to like not be able to use that middle finger right away or use your thumb. And actually a couple times in this we're kind of forced to do the same double stop with the index and the middle instead of the thumb in the middle. So you can switch between them. I'll point them out as they come up. That said, let's go through this uh, line by line. Here's the first line. I think it's already up. Um, I'll play through it just so you can kind of hear it. stops into this next line. That's a D again. Now here's where we get a little bit of trouble because I just hit this note with my thumb right before this double stop. I'm hitting this fifth string with my thumb so I can't use my thumb to get this. So you have to watch out for this. It's going to go thumb and then your index and middle are going to get this. Now the next note you can get with your thumb or your index. You could go get all three with this but uh, I kind of recommend index on that first one and then switch back to your thumb open right so uh, I'm gonna play that from the pickup one, two, three, four, one. then this is just a lick again we have pretty much the same rhythm but a little bit different we're here on this G this F to make it a G7 just to create a little bit of motion. Now here's a little bit of a tough spot here on this um, third line is uh, normally when I get this D I almost always get it with my middle finger and it's nice and easy to get the G7 with my third finger so I can go to C this way but I wanted to get a slide sound from this three to one so my middle finger here is on this three and if I want to slide to one it makes it tough I'm actually hitting this and then it's going to be hard if I want to hold a C chord so what I'm recommending is here on this G7 bar or the second bar of this third line we've got the middle and the third finger down but then I'm going to bring my first finger here just for that last three so I can slide it to one easier third line one more time just so you can hear it and watch that uh, switch. So I'm switching from third finger on that note to first finger on that D note. So here we go. Now here we've got a bunch of double stops. This is the rhythm on this is interesting. You can look at it. It's right in the tablature, but you might want to just go by here. Here. Now notice there that first one I'm doing thumb and middle, but because I hit this fifth string, the next one is with index and middle. Back to thumb. The rest I'm doing with my thumb. And then I just kind of do this lick. So let me play that last line a couple times just so you hear that. Oh, sorry, that's... That's the arrangement. Um, now I want to mention a couple things. One is I did this kind of accidentally uh, through it when I was playing, um, but when I was playing the chords there, you might have noticed a couple times I was throwing bars from this arrangement in. Like I think I was born in Mac and Georgia, kept my day from a Mac and Georgia. So that was just a bar from there. So I could kind of keep following. Tried to do or a dad said son. So I could kind of 
play the melody along with the singing. That's pretty easy for me to do uh, if I'm singing and playing. Uh, but it kind of makes it sound interesting if you can throw it in once or twice or in special spots. Um, it also can kind of inspire other people you're playing with. So for example, if you're playing this with a couple people, uh, you know, maybe a guitar player, a banjo player, and a singer, um, if you just play this melody the whole time through, it kind of loses its its meaning. You're just playing the same melody. But if you play the melody on your breaks, and then during your, uh, when you're playing accompaniment, every so often you just get one or two bars here along with the singer, it kind of, uh, you know, makes it a little more interesting. And if you do it at the same spots, the other people you're jamming with might notice that as well and go, oh, okay, I'm gonna do that same sort of thing, which is kind of a cool moment uh, in a jam. Okay, so in the first, uh, when I played through this, I played it up the neck. Just, the only reason I did that is because it works perfectly up the neck. There's basically nothing in here that isn't the melody. So if you just play the exact same notes up, you're gonna be fine. And I'm not gonna write out the tab for this just because I think it's a nice example for people to go through, but I'll go through it. I'll just do it one more time again, relatively slowly, so you can see my hands if you wanna double check. But if you wanna play it up the neck, what I recommend is get it down the neck first, um, and then get used to those circled notes. So I circled all the melody notes in this, and you can go through and just kind of like find those same notes up, right? D, E, G, D, E, G. And, and I recommend being kind of uh, on this area. I spend most of my time between the seventh fret and I guess I have to go all the way up here to this D note on the 15th fret. Um, so I get D, E here and then G, A, B, C, D pretty much all on the second string. I think that's what I did. So if you get that, uh, I was born in muddy water, then try to do it up here. I was born in muddy water. Okay, yeah, sorry, that F there. Um, just go through and, and even like singing along and trying to play that. Uh, what was the next part? Uh, they kept my dad, they kept my dad in the back of jail. Dad said, son. You know, try to find those yourself. But I'll show you what I think I probably did when I played that. One, two. Again, I wouldn't recommend working on that until you're feeling comfortable with it down. Uh, not that it's any harder, it's just if you know that melody in your head, uh, you can really hear it, you know those notes, you can find it a lot easier. And you can do that with pretty much any song where you're not really acknowledging the chords. So things that are very G minor or G bluesy uh, tend to be pretty easy to do that too. Okay, so last thing I'm gonna do is just play through it, uh, through my arrangement of it one more time at a slow pace so you could play along with it. Um, a one, two, a one, two. Good luck. Till next time. Bye.